We like that beautiful shot as we wake up here on this Tuesday. And since the weather's been so nice here on this side, we thought, why not go to Phoenix Perennials? Here's Don. Exactly, where they're just getting ready to open for the season after a, a bit of a, well, it's kind of a mild winter, to be honest. It was a mild winter. It almost didn't happen. <laughs> Let's just keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. And now we're talking about, um, I guess, adding a little bit of fragrance yeah, to our garden, you know, right? You're, you're, everybody's on their commute. They got up in the dark. And why not enjoy your garden in the dark with some fragrance that you can smell on your way to work? So what do we have here? So I couldn't live without this group of plants in my garden. These are called skimmias. This is a female and she'll get red berries. And then here are the males down here. They'll get bigger like her, but these have uh, pink buds or white buds and then opening to super, super fragrant sweet flowers. Very nice. Couldn't survive without them. Also, these guys are great. These are called wallflowers. Great for sunny positions and really, really fragrant. So we're looking at sweet scents there. Most of these are kind of that sweet. Yeah, yeah. just really sweet. Mm -hmm. Some of them are kind of a strange, heady fragrance like this one, sweet box. Some people love it, some people don't. It's kind of like an like overly sweet, kind of like cilantro, <laughs> which is genetic apparently, okay. whether you like it or not. Everybody's probably noticing the heathers out there that are blooming in gardens right now. They're actually incredibly fragrant. So get up there at the gas station or the bus stop or wherever you see these heathers and smell them. They're actually enchanting. And then the other group of plants that I couldn't survive without would be Daphne's. So if you remember anything after this spot, remember Daphne. It's like a sweet, tropical, citrusy fragrance, and it's in full bloom right outside my front door. And if we happen to see any kind of, I mean, obviously we're still officially in winter. If we happen to see any kind of frost or anything like that, are we in danger of any of killing any of these off? No, all of these guys bloom right now. So they're all good. They're all good. They're used to frost. Awesome. Yeah. So beautiful, fragrant flowers for your garden. Uh, coming up in the next segment in about a half hour, Jody and Riaz, we are going to be talking about uh, adding some color to your garden. Phoenix Perennials out in Richmond. You can check out their website for upcoming workshops. And again, they open this weekend. Literally, and I think that we could probably give Neil Patrick Harris uh, maybe a bit of run for his we money. Could. It'd be a hooray Ray for hellebores. Because we're talking about hellebores, right? I know, and I've been singing this song <laughs> for 11 years. And you know, when I drive around the city, I still don't see hellebores in people's front yards. And here's a plant, a group of plants that blooms for five months over the winter. So this is our PSA. We're bringing awareness to the awareness. hellebore. Okay, so why this are they so great? And a great bang for your buck. It is, yes. First of all, I mean, yeah, they'll last for decades in your garden, so it's a great investment in your garden. Plus, they bloom for about five months from December through to April when nothing else is blooming in your garden. What, what, what could be... I mean, and they're how, come, how come you don't have them exactly, in your garden how yet? Come? And we some need beautiful them. Options. So these ones are the Christmas roses, these white ones, and they start blooming in December and can go until April. Okay. Wow. And you plant them in kind of sunnier positions. These ones in the middle are the classic Lenten roses. It's Lent right now, right? But don't give up hellebores for Lent. These ones are for shadier positions. They have these nodding flowers and they come in this huge range of colors from whites and pinks and yellows and purples and all that. I love it. So options for sun, options for shade. And then these ones here have flowers that look right at you. So they're not nodding like the Lenten roses. These are the new hybrids. They look right at you. And these ones are really good for containers and for the sun. So many great options. You yeah. have your big... Uh, the big Hellebore Hurrah. Hellebore is this, Hurrah this, this weekend. Yeah, this weekend. So, so people can come, they can learn a little bit, they can pick up some great options depending yeah. on where their sun exposure yeah, is. Yeah, we've got Hellebores for every situation. We've got over 90 different kinds of Hellebores. Wow, so it's crazy. So many options. That's this weekend here at Phoenix Perennials. Michelle, coming up uh, just before 8 o'clock, our next segment is going to be about containers for the Hellebores and with a special focus on those of you that have balconies. And we wonder why people always uh, make fun of us here in Vancouver. Oh, poor us. It's winter. Yeah, we're here at Phoenix Perennials in Richmond, where winter for us means that you do have the option of really gardening year-round in a lot of respects, right? I mean, there's a little <laughs> bit of frost this morning, but it's okay. It yeah. sure is. And, you know, when we talk about gardening, too, a lot of, you know, I'm from Alberta, where you sort of assume that you must have space, you must have a yard, and really, mm. you don't need a whole lot of space to be able to make you a big don't. impact. All you need is a little balcony. And we've got container yeah. gardenings to die for. Great options here, and it starts with a container. Yeah, start with your container. So I've chosen a narrow container, which would be really good on a patio, small space, your little eight by four balcony. This is long and narrow. It's also modern, so it'll fit really well into those kind of modern condo situations. The kind of soil that's important to use. Fill it with a good, high quality soil. That's important, because the roots of the plants need to grow in that. And just from starting with a good soil, you'll have you know success and healthy plants. Now we're gonna talk, talk about the thrill, fill, and spill. So this so is the... This is the thrill. 
The thrill, yes, I could, so, I could tell it was This is a New Zealand <laughs> flax. It looks like this year round. And this is your thrill, your exclamation point. Okay. You need some vertical. All right. Then we're gonna choose some fills. So the fills are kind of the round things that sit on top. And this is a fragrant skimmia. And we're basically just planning it out right now. Eventually you yeah. would take them out of the pots, yeah. but you, you do want to pre-plan a little bit. You want bit. to pre-plan yeah, a little exactly. bit. You don't want to play with things a little bit and get creative and then, but take things out, replace things until you get it right. This is a Spurge, also evergreen, and is another fill. I'm try I smell a fragrance in here and I'm trying to figure oh, out which one it's from, well, this but one, it smells very fresh, this one has, Yeah, this one's gonna, actually yeah. it's this one. It's gonna, the yeah. skimmy is gonna be nice and sweet. Mm. Speaking of fragrance, this is a trailing golden rosemary. I was just gonna say, it looks just like rosemary. Yeah. yeah. So it's ornamental, it's gorgeous, and you can come out and snip it and use it in your cooking. So, so multi-purpose. And so this is a spill. So this is gonna spill over the edge a little bit. So we'll just kind of stuff that in there. And then of course, it's hellebore's contain hellebore containers to die for. So we have to fit a hellebore in there for a little bit of seasonal color. And then we want to add some personality too, right? I mean, this has tons of personality. We've got thrill, yeah. fill, spill, but then yeah. we also have other choices that we can make. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, there's so many options available in plants that you can really express yourself and express your own design. So for instance, if we want to fit a few little guys in the front, Dawn, what do you prefer, a blue primrose or a pink heather? I like the blue primrose. You like the blue? Yeah, okay. yeah. Because I think it adds, so, it's just a little yeah, nice so complimentary to our and look rosemary. At it yeah. with, look at it with the gold foliage of the, uh, of the rosemary there. Wow, so many great options. And if you want to have any, um, I guess, guidance on how to create the perfect winter container, you can do that this Saturday. You've yeah. got a great workshop happening here at Phoenix Perennials. Jody and Riaz, a lot of people concerned about the Schaefer beetle, right? Yeah, coming up at about quarter to nine, we are going to talk about what you can do if you have it and how you can prevent it in the future. I know, and you know, people in our office are talking about it. People on Twitter are saying, now it's invaded our beautiful Stanley Park. And we've got footage right now, actually, of what's happened in Stanley Park with respect to the Schaefer beetle. And Chad, maybe just talk us through exactly what the impact is on lawns and perhaps even Stanley Park in this case. Okay, well, what these little guys are doing is they're eating the roots of the, the lawn. And as they, as they eat it, of course, the lawn becomes more susceptible to, to pests like raccoons and skunks and birds, they, they find these guys very tasty, so they come in and they rip it up. So it, ta it tears things apart, which sure. is just awful. And now we can actually see a bit of a, of a close-up look of what the impact is on the lawn. So what are we seeing here? We're basically seeing a very unhealthy lawn. It's got a poor root system and it's easy target, right? The raccoons are gonna go for the easy meal. If there's a healthy lawn next door, they're gonna leave that alone and go for the one that's unrooted and they're gonna rip that up because it's easier to get to. Oh, so that's just terrible. And then yeah. we have to now show what these little culprit lo yeah. culprits look like. We should point out that by having them in here these are not going to invade and all of a sudden we're going to you know cause problems for anyone because no. right now they, they just can't even go anywhere right they're like little larvae yeah they actually should be under the soil right now eating the eating away they, they're probably not enjoying the uh, camera lights very much at all <laughs> and we haven't left them any food no, there's no at food all either. In, either in this case so at this stage right here is there anything like if someone out there has the Schaefer beetle is there anything they can actually do right now not much because in Vancouver there's herbicide laws and the herbicide laws don't allow you to put grub X or anything like that. What you have to do is wait for uh, the summertime. Okay, and, and then got, what do you do in the summer then? You got nematodes. Okay, so ne what are nematodes? <laughs> nematodes are little microscopic worms basically that you apply in the summertime between late July and early August and you got to keep the soil warm. Uh, pardon me, you got to keep it wet and let them get down there and they get inside the uh, the grub and they kill it. Okay, so and I guess prevention is key too. So what can yeah. people do to I guess create an uninviting home for these Schaefer beetles? Basically have a healthy lawn. Okay. So well fertilized, well watered, uh, leave your clippings in your lawn when you cut it. Uh, cut your lawn a little bit higher. Uh, it's because the higher the, the lawn, the lower the root. And so a healthy root is going to make it more of an obstacle for the raccoons to get, get at it. And we know there are, are synthetic options as far as fertilizers. Mm -hmm. what, what can we use as far as organic? Because that's really what you focus on is your orga organic gardening. Uh, yeah, so I do a top dress in the spring, um, just a nice composted soil. And then later, uh, later on I follow up with uh, uh, a Gaia Green organic fertilizer, which is basically glacier rock dust and bone meal and alfalfa and gypsum, believe it or not, which is like drywall. 
and uh, I do that also in late October. Excellent, but it's really all about the nematodes. The nematodes the are the nematodes. most important. Yeah. <laughs> Get those nematodes. Yeah. Uh, Jody and Riaz, uh, we've been at Phoenix Perennials all morning. By the way, they open up this weekend. They've got uh, their container gardening clinic. And again, it's all about the hellebores. The hurrah, hurrah for hellebores. More details, you can go to Phoenix Perennials website.